Hey dude, you wanna hear my new guitar? No, I no right, I really man, don't. You, I really right, don't. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Corismo, a fourth year neurology resident, and on today's episode we're going to be discussing headaches. Specifically, how do we screen for secondary headache disorders, and then we're going to shift gears and focus on one of the more common primary headache disorders you'll encounter, migraine. So why focus an entire video on headache? Well, let's get some perspective. Alright, so let's talk about the Global Burden of Disease Study. This is a study conducted by the WHO, the World Bank, and Harvard, where they basically compiled data on morbidity and mortality from 1990 until 2016 from 195 countries, and we get annual updates. What's interesting about this study is that rather than just look at mortality with regard to certain disease entities and categories, they looked at a thing called disability-adjusted life years. What is a disability-adjusted life year? Very simply, it's both years of life lost prematurely and years of life lost prematurely to disability, which some might argue is a greater burden on families and societies as a whole. So what's interesting is that neurologic diseases as a broad category are the number one cause of disability adjusted life years worldwide. Furthermore, looking underneath that category, we find unsurprisingly that stroke is the number one cause of disability adjusted life years. Now the reason I'm bringing up the study in the first place is that you might be surprised to know that migraine is the number two cause of disability adjusted life years worldwide. Now let's take a look at these age charts and what you'll find is that migraine tends to affect people in their early 20s and late 60s or in other words your peak years of productivity. So what is this study really telling us? It's telling us that all physicians and providers need to take the diagnosis of migraine much more seriously and we also need to start becoming much more aggressive in our treatment of this disorder which we'll talk about in a second. So as a neurologist or a primary care doctor what is your number one job when it comes to headaches? That's going to be screening for secondary headache disorders. Now what is a secondary headache disorder? Well let's start with primary headaches. So primary headaches are headache disorders like tension headache, migraines, trigeminal autonomic cephalgias. These are primary headache disorders that certainly affect people's ability to live their lives but they're usually not gonna kill somebody. So what are secondary headaches? Well, secondary headaches are headaches that are secondary to something scary, like a tumor, or maybe an infection, or even a blood clot in one of the venous sinuses. So how do we screen for these secondary headaches? This is where the nasty nine come into play. These are nine red flags that you really need to be on the lookout for in any patient that you are evaluating for headache. So let's run through them one by one. First we have, first worst, your very first headache and it's absolutely awful. Hey, here you go. Hey, thanks man. So this is your first time drinking fermented mushroom juice? Fermented what now? Number two, abrupt onset, or as some people say, thunderclap headache. Number three, unrelenting progression, fundamental change in pattern. Hey, so I grew up my beard a little bit too much? Number four, a new headache in someone who's less than five years old or older than 50 years old. Number five, a new headache in someone who we would consider to be high risk. Hey hun, watch me do a kickflip in front of the TV. These would be folks who are pregnant, immunosuppressed, or have cancer. Number six, headache with syncope, loss of consciousness, or seizure. So let's make the most of this beautiful day, since we're together. Number seven, a headache that is triggered by Valsalve maneuver. Ow. Number eight, neurologic symptoms lasting longer than an hour. And number nine, an abnormal neurologic exam. Hey Michelle, I've got this headache and my arm is just doing this on its own. Is that normal? It's not normal. It, well, it's been going on for the last 24 hours. So still, still not normal. Okay, okay. I, I'm gonna go, go ahead and call the doctor. If a patient screens positive for any of these nine red flags, you really need to consider obtaining imaging with the best modality being an MRI brain with or without contrast. Based on your patient population, you also need to consider 
checking out the venous sinuses. One caveat to primary headache disorders would be trigeminal autonomic cephalgias. These are headache disorders that are accompanied by autonomic symptoms that we'll discuss in a later video. The important thing to know is that the recommendations now say that we should be screening these people with MRIs for pituitary masses, even though this is a primary headache disorder. Well done, you've done your due diligence in running through the nasty nine or the red flag screening for secondary headache disorder. What's next? Well, it's time to consider the primary headache disorders. Question, what is the most common primary headache disorder out there? Tension headache. Question number two, what is the most common primary headache disorder that you will encounter as a clinician? Migraine. So, while there are a great variety of primary headache disorders, including tension headaches, migraine, migraine with aura, trigeminal autonomic cephalgias, numular headaches, primary stabbing headache. The headache criteria that you should really take the time to memorize would be the criteria for migraine headache disorder. The ICHD3 diagnostic criteria for migraine are as follows. A. At least five attacks lasting four to 72 hours. B, these are pain features and you only need two of the following. Unilateral, pulsing or throbbing, pain aggravated by activity, and moderate to severe in intensity. C, these are associated features and you only need one. Nausea, vomiting, photophobia, and phonophobia. If your patient meets these criteria, they probably have migraine headache disorder, but you're not done yet. Next, you need to take time to categorize the frequency or how many headache days per month this patient is suffering with. And this is because migraine headache disorder can be further classified as being episodic or chronic. Chronic headache disorder would be someone who has greater than or equal to 15 headache days per month. The distinction is going to matter when we talk about treatment options. Does your patient need just an abortive therapy here and there for a couple of headaches per month? or do they really need to be on a daily prophylactic medication? Now, before we start talking about treatment, there is one caveat we need to discuss, and that is the entity of medication overuse headache disorder, also known as rebound headache. People who take abortive medications such as triptans, NSAIDs, or Tylenol, greater than or equal to 15 days out of a month are at risk for this. Why screen for this disorder? The answer is that you'll be unable to treat their primary headache disorder effectively until you address this entity first. Here's the toolkit. Let's start by talking broad categories first. The first thing I'm pulling out is masking tape. This is going to be analogous to our abortive therapies, treatments that you take for individual attacks, not great for long-term care, and possibly even detrimental to your care. Next up, we've got wood glue. This is going to be analogous to our prophylactic medications, medications your patients are going to take on a daily basis to reduce the frequency and the severity of attacks. These are for your chronic migraineurs. And lastly, we've got the hammer. These are your hardcore IV drugs, technically abortives, that you're going to be using for your patients in status micronosis. Again, these are usually IV meds, and they're typically going to be given to patients in the emergency department, and sometimes they'll even require hospitalization. So let's run down each of these one by one. Our abortive therapies would include medications like aspirin, ibuprofen, naproxen, and diclofenac, as well as triptans and Tylenol in our pregnant patients. A frequently used abortive strategy is a migraine cocktail. This is a combination of three IV medications, which typically include Toradol, 30 milligrams, IV Q6 to 8 hours for three days, plus Benadryl, 25 milligrams, IV Q8 hours, and Compazine, 10 milligrams, IV Q6 to 8 hours. Next, we have our daily preventative or prophylactic medications. These consist of anti-epileptic medications, beta blockers, and antidepressants. Our level A anti-epileptic drugs include valproic acid and topiramate. Our level A beta blockers include metoprolol, propranolol, and timolol. And our level B beta blockers are atenolol. All the antidepressants are actually level B despite them being used very frequently. And these include amitriptyline, nortriptyline, and venlafaxine. So which one to pick? Well, you're going to pick based off of your patient's comorbid conditions and compare that against the medication side effect profile. 
and sometimes you'll even use these side effects to your advantage. And lastly, we have our cycle breaker medications. These are going to be for our patients in status migranosis or a migraine headache of maximal intensity for 72 hours. These would typically include steroids like dexamethasone or a medrol dose pack and prednisone, Zyprexa, Sulindac, Methergine, and DHE or dihydroergotamine. It's the time that you need to have one of the most difficult conversations imaginable with your patient. Lifestyle modifications. Lifestyle modifications include exercise, increased water intake, frequent meals and snacks, and avoidance of the pesky, pesky caffeine. Well, thank you to everybody who took the time to watch this video and learn a little bit about headache, its diagnosis, and treatment. I hope you'll support the channel by liking this video or subscribing to the channel. Mm -hmm.